This is an Artist Journey podcast, the podcast for people thriving and creating as artists. I'm your host, Malcolm Dewey, and let's begin. And in this um, podcast, I'm going to be talking a bit about taking advantage of the time you have. The question is, what are you waiting for? I think the correct answer is there is no need to wait because your time is right now. I woke up this morning and I decided to start writing a new blog article. And as I was writing the article, I noticed that the rain that we've been having a lot of recently had stopped. A beautiful blue sky immediately started emerging. It was the typical springtime weather in this area. And the spring sunshine was bright and welcome. It had been quite cold past week. The dust had been washed away. You could sense the grass was growing. The birds had come to life. There was a lot of activity. Nature was taking full advantage of the moment. The question is, are you and I taking advantage of the moment? If we look around us, the evidence suggests that most people are not taking advantage of their time. The degree of anxiety, unhappiness and uncertainty around the world would seem to lend weight to this statement. Generally, people prefer to live in the past or the future, either with regrets at past opportunities lost or slights to their ego, or maybe in the future where the grass is always greener. If only this happens, then I will be happy. This leads to suffering at many levels and adds to the uncertainty. But there is a way to solve the problem. Even with the perfect morning like this, my first impulse was to fall back on the usual chores. And I have to ask myself, do they all have to be done right now? Even the mundane and silly little things that I could do in a few hours' time. There is one chore that I do start off with and don't skip, and that's making the bed. That is uh, one thing I can't really put up with is leaving an unmade bed. But washing the dishes or sweeping the floor, that can wait. Better to get up earlier even and spend an hour or two with your creative activity or your side hustle. Doing the things that are going to get you closer to living the life you really want to live. My wife is similar to me. She has the same impulses, I think. And she's a very talented author and writes amazing books. She's meant to write probably 2,000 words a day or more. Although she hears this calling and she feels compelled to write, she also first feels compelled to vacuum the house, even though she hates vacuuming. I think this is what is called the resistance. The resistance to our creative calling is always working against us. Some call it procrastination, but I think it is a lot more than that. Stephen Pressfield wrote about this issue in his book, The War of Art. It's an amazing book, and you should really get a hold of it if you can. He compares the resistance to a great white shark that attacks you no matter what. It is cold and emotionless. So this is what we are dealing with, and it is a real burden. But if we are aware of it, we can do something about it. So how about this piece of advice that I think we should all be aware of and fear it? So whenever your friends or loved ones or people in general tell you it's too risky, what if this or that goes wrong? They'll call you delusional. They'll say, don't try it. What do you think when you hear this sort of advice? How do you feel? Are you relieved that you've been saved from humiliation or financial disaster that would have put you on the street? Or do you feel kind of empty, cold and drained of the life force that's within you? You need to be honest with yourself when answering this. Remember your true feelings the next time someone wants to pour cold water over your dreams. I think another misconception is it's not all or nothing. For some reason, people think that taking time to honor your calling means it is all or nothing. It's not like that. You don't have to throw it all in, resign, walk out, burn your bridges. 
Yes, you can start right now. You can sit down and write 500 words and post your first blog article right now. You can take out your camera, even your smartphone camera, and take a photo in the perfect morning light right now. You can turn on your smartphone's voice recorder and record your first podcast episode right now. But you do not have to burn your bridges right now. This can wait until you build up your new work ethic. Build up your side hustle until it is a living and viable business. Step by step. Nobody really knows what is meant to be at this moment. Think about this for a bit. When others tell you you cannot because of this or that reason, how do they know what the world needs right now? Did some sweaty, fat bloke grumble on a sweltering day? I wish they would hurry up and invent the damn air conditioner. I don't think so. Did sea voyagers 200 years ago complain that the jet plane hadn't been built yet? No, it wasn't even in contemplation. Imagine if Columbus asked Queen Isabella for money to build a jet plane so he could go and discover the new world a hell of a lot quicker. He'd probably have been locked up for being insane. If your idea provokes ridicule, then you may be on the right track. But you cannot see everything that lies ahead. You have to figure it out step by step. This is true no matter what age you are. Your grandparents are still figuring things out. Your parents are as well, and so are you. That's how life works. We're all bumbling forwards in some way or another. So what can you do right now to take the idea forward? To find out what it takes to make it a reality. That's your job to figure out, so go after it. Test your idea, put it to work, and get some answers. But all along, know the enemy. The biggest hurdle remains fear. I spell this in capital letters because it is the true bogeyman. That ever-present thief the heaviest force in nature that can crush your God-given hopes and dreams in an instant. What is your greatest fear when you consider your art? Perhaps you can scoff in the light of day, but fear arrives at 3 a.m. in the morning. There is only one way to keep this force restrained, to see it and acknowledge it. But don't let it control your decisions. Take action because fear hates positive action. You must be brave. You can never conquer fear entirely. Fear is our shadow in the light and it is the thief in the night. The question is, do you give it attention or not? Do you let others throw fuel onto your smoldering fear or not? That is a choice we have to make. So take action and fire up your passion for creativity instead. The warmth will bring joy to you and others who recognize it. Remember... Bravery is when you do not give in to fear. Also, choose your mentors wisely. They say that we are the average of the five people we associate with the most. Consider this carefully. If you are constantly exposed to cynical people who blame others for their misfortune, you will fall into that mindset. This means you need to reconsider who you spend all your time with. These energy vampires who are going to rob you of your motivation? Or do you associate with positive people who will bring out the best in you? It's your decision. Invest in your education. I love this quote by Naval Ravikant. He says, Free education is abundant all over the internet. It's the desire to learn that is scarce. Isn't that so true? You see it all the time, people choosing to waste time, remain ignorant, complain, demand handouts. Yet the education is right in front of them, but they remain ignorant. Doing nothing is always going to be the default option. You actually have to do something. If you want the education, you've got to take it. Get up and claim it. It's right there. You just have to look. Another thought by Naval Ravikant is, Our universe is huge beyond comprehension. Your life and my life on earth is like a single flash from a firefly. 
a mere second and then it's gone. Life is so short and precious, so why spend it being unhappy? Why wait another day? Recently I wrote about the passing of Tom Petty. He died at the age of 66, but doing what he loved. Imagine if Tom Petty waited for retirement before following his dream to play the guitar. Many people today believe that they have to work and retire at their day jobs and retire at 65 and then hope to do what they've been putting off for a lifetime. 65 makes you think. So what is your decision? What do you resolve to do today? How about, I do resolve to grit my teeth in the face of fear, turn my back on the cynics and welcome those that choose the light. Do the work, laugh, cry, and above all, love. Love is the source of all creation. When the final curtain is called, I hope to have only a few regrets. But as old blue eyes would say, too few to mention. It's very easy, you may say, for me to read these words. I have known a lot of fear, and I still do. Making a decision to go from a secure professional daily livelihood to one based on creativity and art is something that has kept me awake for more nights than I can even count. Often I will wake up and think, what the hell am I doing? This is actually too scary. What if it goes wrong? I'm going to look like an idiot. I'm going to let others down. I've just been a damn fool. But then I spend a great day And I've created something. And people do appreciate it. And my family appreciates it. And I'm a happier person. All the positives stack up and stack up and stack up. And how do I weigh them? Do I take all of these positives and weigh them up against the fear of possible failure? And declare those positives are worthless? Well, that's no way to live, is it? Nothing Worthwhile is ever achieved if you play it completely and utterly safe. And money alone is not going to make one happy. As hard as that is to believe for people who are struggling for an income, it's a simple fact. And as proof of this, I only have to look back to when I finished my school and studying and started out with with nothing, literally working month to month. What was different was my attitude and mindset. I didn't need a lot of money. In fact, I just needed a few of the essentials and that was it. I enjoyed myself. I could go to the beach or do whatever I wanted to do. Most of it all for free and slept like a rock at night. No worries. The truth is as soon as you have more than you need, those things those extras, those luxuries, those things that you've sacrificed so much time to acquire. You don't own those things anymore, they own you. And you begin to covet them and fear their loss. And on it goes. So get rid of it. Go back to the simple way when you were really happy with just what you needed and uh, maybe a little extra in your pocket for an emergency year or there. So with these ideas in in my mind, I still have to tell myself, how many good years do you have left? If all goes well, a mere blink of an eye. Surely it is better to see those years out doing the things that uh, you have fun doing, enjoying them, having a light spirit and not weighed down by worries and regrets for the past, not uh, postponing everything on condition that something will happen in the future. The only time you and I have is this moment right now. So do something right now that is going to reinforce what you are meant to do, what brings you joy. Spend an hour, an hour a day, commit to that and see how it goes and try and commit more next week. That's where the joy will come. You'll spend your whole day waiting for that one hour until you have to turn it into two hours. Until one day you can look at yourself and say, Welcome back. 
If you've enjoyed this podcast, I hope, and it's given you something to think about, maybe you can share it with somebody else who needs to uh, reconsider what they're doing right now. If you can, give it a like or subscribe for future episodes. And uh, I'll see you again soon, and we'll chat again. Until then, cheers for now. This podcast brought to you by Learn to Paint with Impact, my comprehensive painting course for beginners and intermediate artists. You can find out more about Learn to Paint with Impact on our website, malcolmdeweyfineart.com. There's over seven hours of video demonstrations, lessons, and a workbook. So if you're looking for a way to take your painting to a new level or join me on Learn to Paint with Impact, find out more at uh, malcolmdeweyfineart.com.